had a website, but it wasn't, it was just, it was almost like a vanity project back then. Now it is like an entrance fee to have a business. Good. Hey, I wanted to let you know that the Google guarantee, the Google ads, man, I'm getting 12 to 16 calls a week. My goal is at least do 10 to 15 more years, grow it up, sell it for 40, 50 million, maybe more. Today is August 21st, 2024, and my guest is Curtis Gaines of the Right Price, Right Choice Lawn Care Services, a company in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, just outside Nashville. Curtis, thank you so much for coming on the show, and welcome to Titan Talks. Thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate it. We are excited to have you. To get us started, would love to hear how you got started in landscaping and lawn care. Maybe you could offer an origin story. All right. A short, brief story. Um, 26 years ago, man, I started with a push more out of my grandmother's 98 Oldsmobile, man. And it was just like a little part-time job. And I told her that I just needed to um, make some extra money. And she let me borrow her, her, her car and her mower. So that's how it started. Then my very first commercial job, man, was uh, La Petite Academy here in Murfreesboro. So after that, it just started growing and I just started cutting grass for homeowners and then residentials. But that's my story. Uh, no investor all came from ground up um, and I worked my way up. And that's where I am right now. I, I got to how, how old were you when you took that push mower and mowed your grandma's lawn? We mowed when we're, we mowed sometimes when we were kids. But I think I was what, uh, 20, 20, 20 years old. I think I had my son then. So yeah, that's when I hit a little rough patch. You know, we're having a kid really young. You need some extra money. So that's when it was. 20 years. Okay. And then how many years after that did you decide to get into uh, landscaping commercially? It was probably about three years after that is when I started with La Petite. So that was my first commercial account. So actually my son was going there and I just picked up that account and then I just started pushing yards. Did you always want to be a business owner, Curtis, or did life circumstances uh, lend themselves well to doing this? And, and given sort of person you wanted to be, you decided to start a business. So to be honest, I've always carried leadership um, traits and leadership positions, even during high school. And I was late, man, when I first got my first real job, um, it was always in me to, to lead um, and be out front. What happened is I was at Walmart for 15, 16 years and I served in a a lot of different capacities, a lot of different manager positions. And I just got to thinking, man, that I can do my business and put more effort into my own business than Walmart and doing my business on the side. So it, it got like a strain that we were working so many hours at Walmart and I was cutting grass and landscaping on the weekends and it, you know, family time was limited. So, you know, it just clicked, the light bulb went off and said, hey man, you, you can do this, you can do that. And so I left uh, my career at Walmart after 16 years and went full-time. I've been full-time nine years uh, and I haven't looked back and I tell my wife all the time, I'll pick up trash. I'll do whatever I have to do, but I'll ever, I don't want to ever have to go work for somebody else again. Was that scary, Curtis, going off on your own? It was. I came out in October, man. So there's no grass mowing. We didn't have snow equipment back then. So yeah, that was, that was scary. Uh, but our faith um, is, is what's got me here and it's what's keeping me here. So yeah, it was kind of scary, but we, we know who has us. You leaned on your wife and then you leaned on your faith. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. And I wouldn't be here where I'm at today without my wife, because not every day that you can come home to your wife, you want to quit your uh, 16 year job and just go start cutting grass. You know, you know, that was a scary um, thing just to tell her. But she was very receptive and she was like, let's do it. I'm behind you. So I have a great supporting cast, man. Any family or friends who have gone off and done something similar, started their own business in the home services, or are you the first? I I believe I'm the first in, in my family, uh, per okay. se. We got I, we got other entrepreneurs in my family. Yes, my dad, is uh, he owned his own um, trucking company, so he's been doing that for years. He had a plumbing company when we were young, so I've seen the entrepreneurial side of it from a little, little lad. So, yeah, but as far as my immediate family, I'm the first one that jumped out there and said, this is, this is all I got. This is what we're going to do. Let's go back to when you left Walmart and decided to jump into landscaping full time. You said you started in October. What would you say was the hardest thing 
about building a business out of nothing when you started? All right. Well, I already had some clientele. I didn't have enough to be full time at that time in October. So the, the scariest part is you're going into the fall, then you have your air rating overseen and you have some mulch, which is not that much at the time. I didn't have that big of a clientele base. So I think those first three, four months to winter hit, we were trying to figure out some things. So we knew if we could got to get to spring, we could grow it. And that's what we did. We just kept pushing. And, you know, back then we started, uh, you know, we didn't knock on doors, stuff like that. We did some flyers and, you know, some different things to get the word out there that, hey, we're out here full time now. So that's the scariest part. But we knew we had a plan and we executed and it, it paid off. I would tell anybody if they were thinking about doing it, uh, time in is hallways of the essence and try to get as much capital and, and some equipment before you jump out there. Any employees when you started or were you on your own? No, no. I was a one-man one man, uh, one man show. One-man show. You said um, in the early days to get the word out, you used flyers and a couple other things. Take us through some of the marketing tactics that you had to employ to get the business off the ground, make it a full-time thing. Okay. Back then, of course, you want to start with family and friends. Um, and sometimes that's hard for them to take a chance on you um, because you are new in the game too. So start with them first. And then, yes, you start doing a perimeter search on what areas you want to target for your flyer. So we, sometimes, man, you might pass out 500 flyers. You might get two calls back because you know how it is. Some of those flyers get um, – blown away some of them just junk and some of them just gets thrown away you know just from people coming home but i think the hardest part excuse me i think the, the best part of marketing is just to um start locally with your friends and family and your neighbors and then branch out and then after then it'll catch fire once one people one person see you doing a great job they'll tell somebody else now we don't do any of that that i told you about <laughs> no flyers today no, we haven't done that in 20 something years. So we don't knock on doors. We don't, you know, the, the world has evolved. So it's social media and it's websites. Thanks to Top Line Pro is it's stuff like that that gets us out there. And it's our word. It's Google. It's it's our brand. It's, it's us in the community. It's giving back to local schools. It's us uh, feeding people. That's how we get out there. Maybe this is a good opportunity then to turn to the business today. Um, you said when you started, you were on your own. Um, how many team members do you have today? Well, now we got four full-time guys, and then I run three part-time on the weekend. So a total of team members is uh, eight of us, and okay. we do we do some pretty big stuff. What's the biggest project you've had recently? Wow, we just picked up uh, the new uh, Ferguson Distribution Center in uh, Lebanon, and it's right across the street from Amazon. So if you know how big Amazon is, and put that in comparison to what we got. Is it one of those distribution centers? Exactly. It's, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, but we do a lot of, we, we've done, man, we have mowed and take care of properties and landscape. A lot of things from churches to cemeteries, to schools, to um, funeral homes, to churches. I mean, just a plethora of things. So we, we do Hobby Lobby, Coles, Lowe's, you know, just a strip mall, strip plazas. Just a, a, all different things we have done and doing right now. What is the most important quality that you look for when you're thinking about bringing on a new team member? Who are you looking for? Consistency and communication. I, we can teach you how to work. We can teach you how to strike. We can teach you how to uh, edge and mow and landscape. But if you're not committed and you're not consistent, it's very difficult to be on this team. And I, we identify that and everybody's not for us and we're not for everybody. Sometimes we hear that it can be a little tricky to find new talent, new uh, new team members. Have you found that or are there are there people just waiting to sign up? <laughs> no way. No, we live in Tennessee and it's hot. And so everybody wants to get out here in the spring and, and, and cut grass. But then when it gets 95, 98, humidity, 110, it's hard to find some loyal, uh, uh, committed people. So, no, <laughs> this this door doesn't revolve like that. It's It's a hard work. It's very hard and physical. You floated a couple ways that you get new customers. Maybe take us through the top four or five ways that um, now as your business enters a more mature phase, you're you're finding new um, new lawns to mow, new customers. I would say um, Google. Google is your friend. 
Google, there's there's people that are searching at nighttime and they'll they'll call me and say, hey, man, we're going we, we want to call you because you got great reviews. We get you got great reviews. We read 20 and 30 of your reviews. So we're going to give you a chance. And I think that's number one. Um, word of mouth is still near and dear to my heart because, you know, when somebody know, like and trust you and they tell somebody else that gives you a better opportunity to uh, help that customer, that client out. Then I would say my website, uh, um, my website is very instrumental um, part of our business too, because we definitely refer a lot of people to our website. Hey, don't take our word for it. Go on our website, take a look at our pictures, look at some of our reviews on our website. Um, that's how we push that out there and seeing is believing. And then I say, lastly, it would be social media. Hmm. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. And of course, the new way you have to be out there on social media to um, get your get a broad spectrum of, of clients. So I think that'd be my top four ways of getting out there and promoting and advertising. Do you manage all of this? I mean, I do. Managing social do. media <laughs> is a full time job, Curtis. <laughs> it <laughs> is. <laughs> So we're we're averaging probably about sixty two to seventy four hours a week of working, and then then I have office time too. So yeah, I wear many hats. I'm the bidder. I'm the estimator. I'm the fire. I'm the check writer. I'm the social media uh, uh, person. I'm I'm that guy. I'm I'm the team meeting facilitator. I'm him. So yeah, I'm wearing a lot of hats. And don't get me wrong, man. We got a great team, and I, I learned to delegate some things out out of my hand and help ease some of my stress too. But it sounds like you just love it. Oh, I do, man. I, they tell me when you start um, having to work, you might not enjoy it. So right now we're having fun. Good. You talked about the importance of reviews. Um, customers went on and read 20, 30 of your reviews, decided to hire you. How is it that you're getting those? Do you do a project and then ask for a review or do they come in more organically usually? No, after we like, let's say we do a new customer and they're satisfied. Everything's done. They're, they're happy. They didn't pay the check. We're good. And I would say, if you don't mind, would you go and give us a Google review? Good or bad. We just need uh, uh, just your help out there. I said, it helps us want to grow and helps us get better. And, Nine times out of 10, they say, oh, it was actually, it wasn't bad. But I always leave it up to the customer. I don't want to force feed them if they had a bad experience. I want them to, you know, I wish they would tell me first before they put it on Google. But I do want the honest feedback, too. So I don't want it pencil whip. I want my stuff to be authentic. So when people do read it, they if they knew that person, they could call them and say, hey, is this true? Yes, it is. It, I didn't pay anybody for not one Google review. I simply ask them, and uh, they put in their own words on their own time. Take us through the decision to get a website. You're killing it on Google. You have Instagram. You have Facebook. There's word of mouth. You've been in business for a decade. Um, why Why did you need a website, Curtis? Well, I found out that a long time before all the social media stuff that nobody could go on the web and find you if you didn't have a website. <laughs> and so I uh, initially, I had a one-pager. I had a guy that was a computer uh, uh guy and said, hey, I can build you one. I was cutting his grass like, hey, let's do it. We bought it. He did it. I got my footprint on the World Wide Web. That's all I was looking for. I didn't want any traction. I didn't want any of that. I just wanted to be out there. And as time evolved, then as I grew, man, I like, okay, this one pager is not hitting it. And then it was the GIE Expo. And we'll never forget it, man. And you walk around there and talk to all these tech guys and, hey, we can do this. We can do that. And then stop at the uh, uh, well, it was ProLine first, wasn't it? Pro phone, Pro phone, yeah. So it was that first, and then uh, uh, and then I stopped at y'all booth and just talked to you, man. Had a good rapport. You said, man, let me work on something, and you went to the hotel or wherever that night, sent it to me. Once we looked at it, and I was like, wow, this looks clean, and signed up, and I've been faithful uh ever since, man. I'm very happy and very pleased with the website. How long ago was this? If you know, if you knew us as Pro Phone, of course we've changed the name to Top Line Pro. Uh, so right. We kept the Pro, but uh, right. <laughs> we, I think we're on our third year, right? Is it our third year? I I would need to check with with Abby to see exactly when you signed up. Third year sounds right, though. I'll check with her exactly after this. But that's incredible. Okay. We're we're happy to. That's wow. Three years is is really an incredible ride. How? Right. How have um how have we changed in in that time? I I think y'all evolving for the better. Uh, the AI assistant, 
man, that's a help. Um, I get to go in there and schedule some of my um social media stuff. Like, like we get ready to start pushing aeration overseed and come to the end of the next month and first October. So I can go in there and put, set in some parameters, some dates, put in some pictures of what we already did on some aeration overseed hit save and it automatically send that to my social media feed stuff like that is really a game changer where I can do that stuff sitting on a plane or, you know, I could be at home doing that scheduling some stuff. And the website is really uh, user friendly for me. I'm, I'm not that I am tech savvy, but I'm not that guru, but it's really easy for me. Well, working 80 hours a week. Um, if we could even save you five or 10 hours, um, that's, that's a big deal time that you get yeah. to spend with your wife or, exactly so i'm ha happy to hear that we're we're offering that sort of value yes sir and the customer response too if i got a question uh the team is always there and uh me and abby on first name basis so i'll be like hey i don't understand this and she's very very knowledgeable and very very helpful uh for for us too thinking back i don't know 10 15 years how have you seen the industry change Obviously, there's the technology that exists today, but the industry itself, how is it different than it used to be? Man, it's almost more um, cutthroat out here. You got so many people. Right. We're in a saturated industry, but there's a ton of work for everybody. It just seemed like for us, I can speak for us, we nestle in our niche. We don't do anything out of our parameters. So we don't pressure wash. We don't clean gutters. We're not going to get on your roof. We're not a handyman. We're not moving furniture. We stay in our parameters, in our niche. And I think that is what helped us. In the beginning, you see a lot of people doing a lot of things, jack of all trades. You see signs saying they, they cut grass and they pressure wash and all that stuff. So I think now more people are focused on, on what they do best and maximizing that. And that's what really helps us out. At Titan Talks, we like to close with a rapid fire round. Are you ready? Shoot, let's go. You said you sort of always wanted to run your own company, but I'm curious, how has, how has being in charge, how has being the leader helped you grow as a person? Wow, that is a great question. So it has made me grow up. Uh, for one, and just assume and take all responsibilities. Here's something uh, one of my mentors told me, everything is my fault. And if you take in life that it's your fault, whether it's good or bad, and not shun it or push it on anybody else, you'll be successful. So if we're if our company is doing good and we're getting these great reviews, it that's part of me. If we did something wrong, that's part of me. So I own that responsibility. It just helped me own own what I own. What would you say is the most surprising thing about running a business? Wow, um, <laughs> probably the the money. <laughs> <laughs> probably the <laughs> probably the money sometimes. Just just uh, uh in, in a good or bad way, Curtis. Oh, a good way. Sometimes good. it's it's crazy that that you would work at a job for so long and then you can you know do a big landscape job and and get that in one one time. It don't happen all the time, but I've seen that. Someone who's just starting out in the industry, they're opening up a landscaping business. What advice would you offer to them? I would say buy all the piece of equipment that you need and buy an extra piece of everything you have before mm -hmm. you jump out here. That is going to be your, 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 that's going to make you win right there because when that equipment goes down and you're down and you can't service your customer, they will leave you. So you got to have more equipment than, than you need. Proudest moment at the helm of right price, right choice. Proudest moment, man. Uh, being able just to, Thank God that he gives me breath every day to get get up to get to do this. I don't have to do it, but he lets me get to do it, man. That, I think that's the proudest moment right there. And just the freedom. I think you got freedom. If if I want to go home today at four o'clock, I can. I don't have to call anybody and ask them. I don't if I want to go to uh, I don't know, Mexico tomorrow, I don't have to put in PTO. I don't have to ask anybody. I don't have to tell anybody. That that's the proudest moment is being being that person. And to close, Curtis. What's your goal? Why are you doing all this? Man, my goal, I got I got three three children and I got two grands, grandbabies, and I call them my grands. I'm trying to leave them a legacy so they can start on the um twenty yard line trying to score. So they don't have to start back on the opponent's thirty yard line. That's the goal. Let's get them a leg up and a hand up. Well keep building that legacy, Curtis. We're certainly rooting for you at Top Line Pro and honored to be part partnered with you.
thank you so much for being a part of Titan Talks. Hey, I appreciate it, Jonathan. Thank you, brother.